So, in the last video of this tutorial, let's discuss the code for the solution of the tasks that we just discussed. Okay, I have made a structure right here. This is my structure. It has those four members that we discussed uh, before. And then, uh, what I have done is, I have declared a variable named total time for, for my logic. Also, I have taken the number of processes from user. This is where I am taking the input. And then, this is interesting, this, this is where I have uh, defined the structure variable, the array of structures. Let's see. So, first of all, what I did was, uh, obviously, I have to fill up the array. I have to take the ID and service time of the process from the user. Actually, I have just taken the service time from user right here. What I did was, I ran a loop here, starting from zero and less than the number of processes. This is my for loop. And what I did was, I took the service time from user right here. But I did not take the ID of the process from user. I actually, what I did is, I actually assigned it I. I is the variable of my loop, for loop. So, you, you, you may take it from user. Actually, you should take it from user. I just did it this way, that I assigned it uh, the index of my loop. Okay, let's see next. And then what I did is, whatever service time was input from user, I added it up in the variable, which I declared before, total time. So, wh what is happening is, this is my, uh, these are my processes, whatever they are. They were actually like this. The example that we took was, I think, I think it was this. Okay. So, um, these are the service times, and I have defined a variable named total time. I'm just, what I'm doing is, I'm adding all these up 5, 3, 4, 1. I'm adding all these up in a variable step by step. I'm, I'm not adding all these in one go. I'm adding them step by step. For, so, for, at the first iteration of the loop, the variable total time, this I am talking about this variable. This variable uh, was initially set to 0 and at the first iteration of the loop it will become this. 0 plus 5. This 0 plus 5 will be equal to this. This is what, what's going on at, at this line. And then uh, this is actually um, the important thing. What I have done is I have checked if this is the first iteration of my loop, then it means I'm, I'm on my first process. If it's, this is the first iteration of the loop, I, I, I'm on the first process. So if this is the first process, then uh, assign the waiting time of first process as zero. So I am manually assigning the waiting time of my first process as zero. Otherwise, if this is any other process, this is not the first process, this is any other process, then assign the waiting time variable uh, member of this process equal to the total time of all previous process. You see i minus 1 right here. This i minus 1 right here is actually for indicating that this total time is of the uh, of all the previous processes. Not of this particular process but the previous processes. So actually uh, the waiting time uh, for any process is actually equal to the total time of all the previous processes because obviously this this uh, process will have to wait to the total time of all the previous processes. So 5 plus 3 it has to wait uh, for 5 plus 3, 8 units of time and 1 has to wait for 5 plus 3 plus 4 un total units of time. And actually this is my logic. So you should make your own. You may use your own logic. This is just one way of doing it. There are a lot of way, other ways. So I have assigned uh, the waiting time of any other process other than the first process equal to the total time of all its previous processes. And uh, this variable here, this variable here, total time is not equal to this variable. This is not this variable. This total time is actually the member variable of the structure. This is not equal to this. So you may have a question now that how 
can I assign this uh, to another variable when I'm, I haven't initialized this because this is not the same as this variable. So the answer to that is in the next line that in the next line I have initialized uh, the variable total time, the member variable total time equal to my integer variable total time. These are actually two different variables. So I've assigned the uh, member variable of this particular process equal to the total time. And also uh, you may have a question that this line, line is written after this line. So uh, it might be a problem because I have initialized it. I have initialized this variable but later at, at a later time. So how come I can use this right here? The answer to this is in the first iteration of the loop only this part of the loop will run. It is only this if will run because it will be the first iteration of the loop. So only this will run. The else part of the uh, if else statement will not run. So so this this particular statement, this statement will not run at the uh, first iteration of the loop. It won't run. So when it won't run, this line actually comes first because only this if part will run and then this statement is, you can see very clearly that this statement is not written inside the if-else statement. So this statement is actually outside if-else statement. It's not a part of this else. So at the very first iteration, this thing will run and then this line will run. In the ne next iteration, in the second or other iteration, next iteration, then this else will run. So this obviously, this line will come at a later stage. Again, this is my logic. This is just one way of doing it. You can do it in, in a lot of other ways and I hope you should do it um, in your own way. Make your own logic for this. You have understood this concept. Where is that slide? You have understood this concept very well. Just use this and make your own logic. Right? So don't go for uh, my logic. Right here. Okay, let's see the next last slide. What I've done is I have just um, made another for loop and I have just displayed all of these members here uh, to see if I've calculated everything right. And this is the code for FCFS. So we don't have to do anything else because in FCFS, whichever process comes first uh, will run first. So, so this um, this displaying of, of the processes will actually depict the way these processes will run through the FCFS algorithm. So that's a nice simulation. Uh, also, I have missed some steps in this code. I haven't done them because they were very easy. So I left them up for you. Which steps have I missed? I have missed these steps. These four steps, I haven't done them. I haven't calculated the total waiting time or total turnaround time and then the average waiting and turnaround time. You can easily do that. You just have to declare an integer variable and just uh, add all the waiting times of all the processes. Just add the waiting time of all the processes and add the total time of all the processes in the array. You just have to do that. It's very simple. So you, you can do it even without um, getting help from you or getting co my code. Okay, so here I have just displayed it. Let's see the output and let's see if we have calculated, if our code has successfully uh, calculated the right the times for all of these things. So let's see here. I have taken the number of processes. These are five. And then I have taken the service time of the processes from user. And for simplicity or to understand it better, I have put the service time of all the uh, processes as three. So it's easier for you to add them and then see if uh, the code uh, was right or not. So after displaying, this is the displaying part. The service time of process 1 is 3. The waiting time of process 1 is 0. It should be 0. This is right. And the total time is equals to 0 plus 3. Total time is equals to this. I should use some other pen for on this dark mode. So let, let's do it again. Total time is equals to this service time and then uh, this waiting time. So add both of these and you get this. This is right. The next process again has three service time. Waiting time for this process should be three. Why it should be three? Because it should be three because it has to it has to wait 
for the first process this this is the first process this is the second process so the waiting time of second process should be equal to this time the service time of first process so this is correct right this is correct and the total time is 6 how this 3 plus this 3 i should use a highlight so this 3 here and this 3 here is equals to this this 6 Okay, next, uh, the third process, waiting time of third process is equals to 6. How? It's equal to this 3 and this 3 right here. Add both of them, it becomes 6. So that's why it's 6. And then total time is equals to this 6 plus this 3, which is equals to 9. So this is right. And then the fourth process, again, the waiting time for fourth process should be equal to the waiting time of all the previous processes and in our case these are the previous processes these three so add them up you will get 9 right see this is 9 and then total time is equals to this 3 and then this 9 so 9 plus 3 equals to 12 and the same is the case for the fifth process so that this means that our code was right we have calculated all the time they, they are right so that's it. I hope you learn well and hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.